it's a long haul. You lose touch with the real world. It's a big team, a small boat, but it can be a lonely place. It's an endless marathon, it's relentless. You become a better sailor, you try to become also a better person. Just like an Ironman triathlon, there's nothing really fun about doing it, but it's the reward that you reap at the end of it that makes it all worthwhile. It's amazing what the mind and body can cope with. I was the coldest I've ever been at times. I was the tiredest I've ever been. But you just knew that what we were doing was the coolest thing we'll probably ever do. The thoughts about a female crew, that they are not good enough to beat the male team, because they are not strong enough, they are not tough enough, and they don't have the willpower to win. And I think it's completely wrong. It's time to go. We are ready, we're fit, we're strong, so let's just get out of here. We're going to sail around the world. We've got a lot to learn and we've got a lot to show people we can do this. It's going to be the adventure of a lifetime. We have been training longer than everyone else. You know, we've been a team longer than everyone else. I think uh, I'll be disappointed if there aren't a few boats behind us. It feels really cool, actually. In a little while, it will really kick in that this is it, we're, we're doing this. We were leading the first leg of the race. It was huge. We chose to approach Gibraltar from the north, and the rest of the fleet chose to approach from the south. When we came to the Straits, I was like, hmm, they're not here. And then you got the position report in, and we're like, we're 18 miles in the lead, ladies. And everyone's like, no way, this is amazing. More of a downward trend in the sked for us. We're now uh, have gone from hero to zero almost, <laughs> let's say. We started off winning and leading and then we ended up with a really big deficit and then we caught back up a bit and then we lost again and then in the final stages we overtook Matt Frey. I had no comprehension at the start of the race of how many miles was a loss that you couldn't get back or could get back but I always think as well that naivety can be a bigger strength and on leg one we were over 100 miles behind the next boat. I just believed that we would get them back. We're still going quicker than Mapfra. We calculated how many miles it was every six hours, every sked that we needed to gain back. And then we started making that game. When we finished the leg in Cape Town, having beaten Mapfra and overtaken them in the last mile, people said we didn't think you'd ever get them. And I believed that we would pass them, and, and we did. But uh, that's been something we've had to learn. I think there's an overall challenge in the race that I hadn't really comprehended until we started, which is it's just relentless. It is non-stop, and that's why it's so tough. It's really hard to prepare for something that's going to last nine months. There isn't any downtime as such. Even when we are ashore, it's very little rest. It's focused on recovery or eating well or getting fit again. It's a long nine months. That's part of the challenge. Time goes so fast on the ocean, I think especially when you're racing, it just flies by. Your life becomes very simple and the things you're thinking about are pretty much how you make the boat go fast and the direction you want to go. Even the moments that you do get to sleep and the moments that you do get to eat, everything seems rushed. The food, you have to get it down really quickly because you have to get on deck. 
And the sleeping hours that you get are not as much as you would normally need. The light wind moments when there's absolutely no breeze on the water and the sails are flapping around, those are actually the hardest moments. Wowzers. For me, it was the sleep. I sleep a lot <laughs> to keep going. When you're in the moment, you don't need to sleep a lot, but you get to a place in this race where you have lacked so much sleep, sometimes you don't know what's going on, and you have to find a way to recharge your brain or jumpstart it. That's maybe where I made a change in the race and became more comfortable offshore because I could have a ton of energy on the boat when I was really tired. Sometimes it's just so intense. Even talking too much while I'm at the helm, it's frowned upon, you know, they're like, concentrate. After a month of that, I just, I'm ready to relax and have a bit of fun. That's how we stay safe. For us, as sailors, it's all about the racing, but there's so much more around it. You have your media commitments and things like corporate sailing, for example. But at the end of the day, when you put a smile on people's faces, it puts a smile on our faces as well. Yes, you have to take your breaks, but at the same time, you have to be able to keep that focus. And that's what makes the Volvo Ocean Race so special. It's not a five-day regatta, it's a nine-month regatta. Leg two is a bit of a mystery. We're going into new territory, discovering new weather systems. We're prepared for it to be long and hard. Leg two from South Africa to Abu Dhabi for us was uh, probably our most disappointing leg of the race. As an inexperienced team, we made a lot of mistakes and some of them big. We had a mistake made on shore, which then translated to a big mistake on the water. So the mistake for us was a typo, unfortunately. That therefore meant the position we'd been positioning ourselves west of the fleet was obviously incorrect. It was crushing. That was something I really struggled with to begin with, was seeing the disappointment on some of the girls' faces. It was not one person had made that area, it was a collective mistake. And it was one of those suck it up moments. It was a massive test on everyone personally and as a team. I think that's the great thing about having a big team is there's always someone who's feeling positive and in that moment, different people come forward. Sam's good at going, no, this is it, we're all in this. We're gonna make some wrong decisions. We're gonna lose miles, we're gonna gain miles. It's not just you making the decision, it's all of us. The East option is going to be quite tricky for Matt Frey. And in fact, we've stayed together as the same team for the whole trip around the world and for two and a half years. I don't think there's any other team out there that's done that. Teamwork is extremely important and I think that's probably what we worked hardest at. It's taken a long time for us to get our communication right, get the group dynamics into a certain way and that's why we were able to win two import races and uh, being able to uh, make clear decisions in the end. At the beginning of the campaign, no one was talking about the import racing, mainly because it's really physical. You're just grinding non-stop. The goal was to turn up and not break anything. Be ready then to go offshore. Obviously for a few of us, uh, Sally and myself, Olympic sailors, we had other goals in our mind. We did then start working on the imports just so we looked all right. And then I think everyone realized we could do more than just make sure we showed up and didn't break something. It was something that I've always tried to do is race against the guys in a short course and I've always believed you have the strong enough team and everybody's working together and you all know what you're doing, you can do it better than them. So Abu Dhabi, the conditions that we won in there, they started to call SCA's conditions. It was just about sailing clean, having boat speed and having good tactics. When it came to maneuvering, we were a bit slower than the guys, the physicality of it. 
in New Zealand, there was nothing that anyone could say other than the fact that we just sailed a damn good race. I told the girls if we push really hard and we're in the lead three quarters up the first beat, we'll probably be able to hold on to it. So that was a really big focus and it ended up turning out right. Our head coach at the beginning, he definitely didn't believe that we would be able to perform in port to win in front of all of his mates and in his hometown. I think he, you saw him change. He, yeah, he was proud of us and uh, I think that was a big moment for us. The first thing we said once we got that win today was let's go to the Southern Ocean. I think it's really lifted morale, it's got the team together. It's reminded us we can do this and we can sail and race these boats. And so what a way to go into leg five. And I think it's just the best thing that's gonna to happen to us. This leg, if it is classic Southern Ocean, for us, it's almost doubling anything we've been in. The strongest breeze as a team that we've seen was 47 knots, but it was a gust. We've got to be one team. We've got to work together. We've got to back each other up, like, 100%. We are going to be completely dependent on each other. Yes, for performance, but also for our lives. It's the first time where we're going somewhere a long way away from rescue survival rate if you fall in is very very low the likelihood of being knocked off the boat is much much higher than any of the other legs before so I think as a skipper the area where I'm nervous about is that there's a little bit beyond my control I remember being emotional in a few of the leg leaves I think probably the hardest one was the beginning of leg five because we knew we were setting off into the southern ocean I'd never been there before and I knew it was quite a dangerous leg the difficult part about the Southern Ocean, you sort of feel unprepared when you go in there. My main feeling overriding any feeling of cold, tired, hungry was feeling, yeah, really frustrated. We broke a sail that we needed early on in the leg. That resulted in us being very slow for a lot of the leg and you don't want to be going slowly when you're somewhere that cold. It was dark, the electronics were failing us a little bit. It's not a great moment. And we just got a little unsteady for a while there and we ended up broaching the boat. And the fractional zero flapped a few times and then broke, the whole inside of the sail fell out. The boat turned around and we Chinese jived, which is probably one of the biggest things that you can get wrong. I always have an image in my head of uh, the five of us who are on deck clinging to the side of the boat. And uh, yeah, I think if you experience things like that in your life, then whatever other hurdles come along don't seem quite so difficult. That flash moment of being in the cockpit and the, the cockpit side being six foot above you in the air and it was just the thought of this could go horribly wrong. Later in the leg we, we had another capsize. I was actually driving this time. We hit something and it spun the rudder which sent us into a capsize. Okay it was daytime but we were much quicker to get the boat back upright. So we definitely learned quite a few lessons from the previous one. Southern Ocean, I think it was our biggest challenge for the race and our biggest reward as well. About 10 miles after Cape Horn when we had 50 knots, we were sending it downwind and I was driving. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was really hard. So cold and so windy and so wet, but um, you just knew you were living your dream in real life at that moment. At one point it was, I'm never going to do it again, and shortly after we finished, I couldn't wait to do it again. When 
when I got to Brazil, a couple of mums came up to me and thanked me. And I was thinking, why are they thanking me? And I suddenly realised, oh, they're thanking me because I brought their children back safely from the Southern Ocean. As women in offshore sailing, having a huge experience gap to close, preparation is everything. It's some of the key to success. It's been 12 years since the girls have sailed in the Volvo Ocean Race. Yes, we all had brand new boats, so everybody was starting from the same place. But the guys have been doing Volvos consecutively in that time period. This gap of experience was big. The girls, in all their previous experience, they've been very successful. But when you put that in the Volvo type of boat, in a team environment for a very long period of time, it all was very new for them. Well, I'd never sailed for more than a few days offshore. Certainly hadn't driven a boat at night and uh, didn't really know how to put a reef in a sail, which is a very basic manoeuvre that we have to do hundreds of times out there. That's why in the end of the day, this whole recruitment slash training program got much longer than what we expected. Land's already was a long process. It took us more than a year to form the team, to find all the girls that we needed and the skills we needed, and just to learn how to sail this kind of boat and really have enough skills to be able to go offshore and be competitive and also to be safe. We all come from different backgrounds, Olympic sailing, match racing, solo offshore sailing. To make all that mix gel together has been a very intense period of our campaign. But um, when it does go well, it then feels like the perfect match. We made huge progress navigation-wise, sailing the boat faster, finding the modes, and uh, also finding the, the good people on the good positions. The time towards the leaders got shorter and shorter, and, and that was our goal. We had the most to learn, and we were learning pretty quick. I think when we started the race, we were quite naive and thought we were very good at what we did. And now when you look back, the changes are huge. I think it took a while for us to work out who should be doing what and how to use those strengths, but finally we have. That makes us a really strong team. We're going to give it everything because it's going to come out once, once. It has to, it just has to. In sailing, we don't often talk about a perfect race. You never ever sail a perfect race, but this almost felt like a perfect leg. It's a trim off tonight, and I'm taking that guy down over there. He doesn't know it yet. The biggest thing for me on that leg was we didn't see anything on that leg that we hadn't experienced before. It was a good night. Got to have a couple more of them and then we're making our coaches wear pink. <laughs> That's been our biggest hurdle. Every time we go into a leg, we're going all right and then we come across something we've never seen before and it takes us longer to work out how to deal with it. We had done a lot of good things along the way, but then we'd stuffed it up, we'd have a mistake and we were our reason that we weren't winning. And then suddenly we didn't make mistakes and we were the reason we were winning. had every kind of wind range, you know, we had fairly horrific sea state and, and wind in the Bear Biscay, but we, it just worked. Not very nice conditions, but I think we're still winning, so we've got to be happy with that. It was actually quite scary because normally we are looking forward and trying to make up the distance so we can see the other guys on the tracker, and we were so far in front we couldn't see them on the tracker. We were here, and uh, the next boat Vestas was Coming across the line, I basically ran to the bow to make sure I was first. <laughs> yeah, it was just unbelievable. Best feeling ever. Yes! 
and when we crossed the finish line and when I saw the girls hugging and sharing I felt so proud and happy for them because they've been fighting so hard and for a long time. We made a deal with the girls back in Lanzarote that um, if they got a podium position that the coaches would um, be covered in pink from head to toe. Fortunately we had to come through with the best. The best moment after winning that, one of the guys from Alba Medica said to me, he goes, it's unbelievable. I said, what, that we won? He said, no, you didn't make a single mistake the entire race. And I think that's probably the biggest sign of respect that you can get from the rest of the guys. We had an opportunity to be on the podium overall on the import in Gothenburg. Last one, see how it goes. Hopefully the wind feels in, but uh, yeah, let's make it a good one. I feel quite a lot of pressure. It would mean so much to do well. We're sailing in front of a home crowd, being Team SCA and being a Swedish project. We also had Princess Victoria on board with us, so that added on a little bit of pressure. Heading out for the start in Gothenburg, the Navy ship was saluting us. It was a really, really light wind day. It was really tricky and we really needed a good position, so everyone was quite nervous. So we just finished one lap and we're in second. We're having a great flight between Brunel and Matt Free. It's nerve wracking sailing, this is. Sorry. You got like got the little puff, pulled away with Brunel, and at that moment I thought, no, nah, we're not going to give this out of hands anymore, this is ours. Yeah, sure, it was intense, it has to be intense. We had to take a few risks here and there, but uh, it's paid off. It's a pretty amazing feeling. A little bit further down. That moment after we crossed the line was a big relief to be in second and know that we got back on the podium overall. Same conditions, same place, same time as the guys and we could just sell better. For us that is a massive achievement and we should be really proud of it. I can't believe it's done. We we're finished the Volvo Ocean Race. We've put women's offshore sailing on the map now for it never to be removed. We're all really sad that it's over just when we're starting to come good. We know where we came from and we know that we've learnt a lot. We would have loved to have maybe three more ocean legs to show how far we've come and get some good results. Stormy weather. Almost incomparable how we're sailing the boat now to how we were on leg one. We were sailing. 20 to 25 percent faster than we were when we started this race. We were days behind the others at the beginning and now we're minutes or sometimes in front. Actually this just needs to keep going. It feels like the ball has just started to roll and you just want it to keep going and then it could be a huge thing. Yeah we've struggled on some of the legs and that is not because we're women. We just don't have enough experience in this kind of boat. That is only going to come by more women doing it. Maybe it'll only come around once, or you know, maybe we'll get to be like these guys who've done six laps around the world. Hopefully, it will just be the start of a, a much bigger thing. And in you know, when I'm 100, I can go, "Wow, it was me!" And look at it now. Amazing the messages that we've received. I can't tell you just how heartfelt they are from people that we've never met, we have no idea who they are, and we've given them inspiration to do something that they wouldn't have normally done. School teachers who have got their classes following us around the world and they're replicating everything that we do on board. It's very moving to see the amount of impact that we've had. It feels like we've not only made history, but we've sort of changed the world a little bit. If you can be a little part of that something, 
that has changed the world. Yeah, and that's, that's a pretty cool thing.